I've just covered a platter blank rim, a platter rim, with four colours of paint, none of which were filmed. I started off with black, then red, then yellow, and then white. So I now have a platter blank looking like this. Wow, that's pretty overexposed. Um, so I'm going to leave that paint dry and then attack it with a wire brush tomorrow. See you in the morning. I couldn't wait for it to dry. So I tried something different using my favorite coloring tool, kitchen roll or paper towel. Right, so the paint is still uh, quite wet. I'm just using the edge of a bit of um, folded up kitchen paper to dab into the edge, plucking up the color. So it's going to have a textured finish and it just happens to be a little bit of gold on here from a previous bit of work. The harder I'm pressing the more I'm getting through to all of the colours. Quite like it when there's some of the red coming through, a bit more of that happening here. I think I should uh, refresh my edges. So, pair of scissors, snip that off. I like it much more over here than I do around this side. I think it's pulled out more of the red round here. You know me, I never know when to stop. And of course, the more I put this paper on, the more it's going to muddy the look. So I do have to show some restraint now and leave it. But I definitely prefer this part to this part. But we'll see how it dries. Uh, that's going to have to take overnight, of course, for sure. And uh, see what I'm left with and see what I like. And I couldn't actually resist staying indoors only having one platter rim drying in the shed. So I've come out here to have another go. Two for the price of one. Who can complain about that? If you notice a few bits of other colour in the way, well, that's just evidence it's one of my usual bits of wood. It's already been used for half a dozen things. Just going to seal it before I put the first lot of paints on. Right, time to give the sanding sealer just a quick go through with the 400 grit. Mm. 
Now that feels silky smooth. Okay, right. Right, white first. This nozzle needs cleaning. Quite a lot of my nozzles need cleaning. It's yellow now. Don't mind it spotting. And then lastly we'll come back with some black. Another one that could do with a clean nozzle. That will do. So the same technique, bit of kitchen roll, except I've already done it. Have a look, you'll see what I mean. So yeah, what have I done? Well, I've just taken the kitchen roll put it into the paint and given it just a little little movement now obviously I can't recreate all of that and work my way all the way around it so um apologies for my technical incompetence now like I always say the colors aren't important um, obviously some colors will work well together and others won't and you know I might in the middle of the night have thought have a thought that oh I wish I'd done this color this color and this color it would have been at least three um, but it's been playtime I've missed playtime now it really will be tomorrow that you see me back in the shed filming things because there's absolutely nothing I can do with this now show you a little side view of it try and get some of the glare off it very hard because there's so much wet paint on there well, I just hope it will be dry by the morning. Otherwise, I'll have to wait a bit longer to get my next video up. Right, over and out. Good morning, the day after. Now you've seen my video hopefully on, on this technique of exactly the same application, several layers of wet paint sprayed one over the other, but then large sheet of newspaper put on and lifting off. And when it dries, it goes uh, a more matte finish, the paints that I've been using. And it does seem to level a little bit. Now, um, although they've had a whole night to dry, they are still a little bit, a little bit tacky. It's, it's not at a stage yet where I can think about putting a finish on, but I can simulate what it would look like by just turning the paint away from the middle um, and putting a bit of wax in there just to get a sort of uh, a mock-up of what this might look like. Probably I'd want to, I'd probably want to put a shiny finish on the rim, but I'm not 100% certain. What I might try as well when it's dried properly is, is this pulling away that I did with the kitchen roll uh, does leave it a little more uneven than the pulling off with a sheet of newspaper. So it's possible I might give it a very, very fine abrade. But in order to get this video finished and up in time, without you having to wait too long, I'm going to go ahead now and with both of these, just uh, with a scraper, just turn out the paint and the wood chips that stuck in the paint um, and quick sand and uh, then they'll be ready for some close-ups. Uh, 
There we go, getting under the wood now. Obviously if I were going to be putting this up for sale, I would turn all the paint out that was in the middle. There we go. And this one I'll just finish the inside with the cut and polish. Give it a nice rub in. You can see a sheen building up I think. Right, so here we go then. Here's the first one, which was actually the second one I did. Um, I probably would like to have had a bit more of the yellow coming out, um, but I think there's a lot of potential in this, uh, this paint pulling technique. Uh, I've seen a lot of videos of string pulling where the string is laid in the paint and pulled, um, but on this one it was really the paint that was being pulled up with the, with the paper cloth. And then this one, sort of more interesting choice of colours for me, really, in a way, all that white behind it. I don't normally do something with such a pastel kind of, of colour to it, but I really, really like this bit here, the colours where they're a bit more vibrant. Uh, there is a texture. It will need a finish. It looks quite matte against the shine um, in the middle on the wood. Um, and that's very close to joining the funnel club so this one because of the splits in it they don't actually go all the way through I probably if I had shaped that a bit better might have got away with it but I know there are two big cracks running across the rim that might open up in time so this will be used for more experiment so what I imagine I'm going to do certainly with this one is to do some sanding of the edge, try and flatten it down a little, see what that does to the paint. Um, obviously I don't want to sand all the way through, it might pick out a bit more of the of the red and uh, I'll post pictures on my Facebook of that and on Instagram. And then this one, well the back hasn't been finished properly yet anyway, this one I'll probably do something similar and see how well that works and if it works well then I'll get rid of the paint on the inside um, and turn the back properly. Well, the close-ups have shown you some of the, um, or are showing you, uh, a bit more detail and obviously uh, if you have a little more skill and you take a little more time and you use a clean bit of paper for each of the pulls you're going to get much less contamination and mixing of of the other colours. So go ahead, have fun. Please don't forget to wear a vapour rated respirator when you are using spray paints. And on that health and safety note, until next time, thanks for watching.